Farewell, Kenny. Hello, Donkey Kong Titan. So what's up, guys? Fox in here. Unfortunately, you got the end of Kenny and his squad. Now coming in, they're replaced by the Beast Titan and his warrior squad. So how many changes were there for this very special episode? The one where not only one, but two Ackerman smiled. Let's go ahead and get started. At the very start of the episode, you see Nio overseeing the military police, building this platform later used for Historia getting crowned as queen. This whole scene is anime original. In the manga, you later do see this platform, although it was only briefly for a shot during Historia's big moment. Following this scene, you see Levi scouting whatever is left of the Ray's family crystal cave. I just love how thorough Levi is with making sure that Kenny and his squad are actually gone. He's gotta find their crushed bodies or a puddle of blood. Of course, this Levi scene is anime original. After the manga Rod Titan got nuked, and Historia revealed herself as the true queen, the next time you saw manga Levi was after he found Kenny next to that tree. By the way, credit here for the Attack on Titan Season 3 anime for showing you this bloody mess of the crushed Kenny squad. So far, they've removed so much blood from the first part of Season 3, which is surprising because now it looks like they don't give a damn. Next up, the young Kenny and Ray's family flashback. At the very start, you see anime Kenny trying to slash away at this titan hand. Compare this to manga Kenny that had already been grabbed by the titan hand at this point. It just made anime Kenny look that much more desperate. For Udi Reyes, do notice the titan markings on his face. They're much smaller in length for the anime. Now, they also match the titan markings on Eren's face. In fact, they heavily simplify these compared to the various designs used in Season 1 and Season 2. Not only does it make it easier to draw, now they match more closely to the manga version. Oh, and what is this? Right here you have a nice little cameo from Horseface's family. Seems that Manga Kenny was much more savage. He took out their freaking horse. Guess it's time to make some glue. Fortunately, there was no anime cruelty in the anime. Yeah, let's just ignore what happened in Season 2. Although do notice, by the end of this scene, the horse has totally tapped out. I actually think I found another Season 3 animation mistake. Next up, in the scene where Kenny is dropped, Anime Kenny now has a new line concerned about his legs. Was Kenny just further injured when he got grabbed? As for Udi's stylish wardrobe choice, this thing got an upgrade for the Season 3 anime. Manga Udi resembles some monk from Iron Fisted. Compare this to Anime Udi that doesn't look like he's now covered in some old rags. His clothing also is not just one brown color, he's got this white top. For Udi himself, I did mention that Armin comparison in my recent Attack on Titan review. Among manga readers, a lot of people did think that Udi was blonde. Now, his official hair color in the anime is brownish. Next up, in the following scene of Udi asking for forgiveness, you actually got this new close-up shot of him and his arm from down below. Just notice how painful that stab looks, although it does look a tad darkened. Bet you that's going to be redder in the Blu-ray. Then, you get this close-up shot of it. Compare this to the manga version. Like I mentioned before, really seems like they're not holding back any longer on the blood or partial gore. Makes you wonder whether good ratings are part of it. And next up, in the next scene of Ketty getting friendly with a council, couple of differences here. For starters, there's one window in the room. Different design for that one window too. The anime now added a full tea set for their enjoyment. Then, the background room structure is totally different, along with that painting shifted wall placement. Next up, Kenny in the underground city. Surprisingly, I've actually seen a lot of comments from some of you saying that this came out of nowhere. If this sounds like you, definitely check out Levi's No Regret series. Notice how the anime version of this underground city does look like an actual city. There's a whole lot of homes all around. In comparison, the manga underground city looked much more like the slums. It also looks like they're in some massive cave underground area with those natural forming pillar structures. The manga version in comparison has these man-made pillars for this city. Next up, notice this gentleman. He has much fewer teeth in the anime. As for the young Levi intro, I was super curious to see him in the season 3 anime. Kid Levi looked almost like a super rough sketch in the manga. For the anime, now you can spot Levi's blue eyes too. Next up, Kenny's life skills bootcamp. Beginning with the shot of the knife, the anime went ahead and improved this with the Ackerman's reflection from it. Next up, the Ray's family little church gathering. Exclusive invitation only, by the way. The anime now has this new shot emphasizing Udi. Right here, he mentions a new line about praying for true world peace. Hmm. Anyway, back to Kit Levi making it rain. For anime Levi, you get to see much more of his wonderful ass beating. It's much more clear to see young Levi himself bleeding too. 
so it wasn't completely one-sided. I'd imagine Levi got punched in the face, then kept on going. Next up, the good old buddies at the lake. Notice how this pond is much bigger in the anime and far mistier. You can't even see the trees in the distance that well. The anime then added this previous shot of Frida munching on her uncle before switching over to her. For Kenny's big moment where he questions himself here, the slight difference is the more focus on Frida. Especially notice this shot of her looking that much more divine. As for Kenny introducing himself to his new Kenny squad, a small but very nice addition was Kenny's laugh here. That was just before talking to his new blonde second in command. In the following Kenny squad training still shot, the anime version now shows him with updated pistol and upgraded 3D maneuver gear. This includes the new metal chest plating along with the metal shoulder protection. Now getting back to Kenny present day, notice how they moved his 3D maneuver gear over to the other side of the tree. Right here you can now see Levi and the scout heading over towards Kenny's resting spot from the cave ruins. Next up, Kenny's great life realization. You now get a full view of Rod crawling on Historia's mother's lap. Was this before or after they hooked up, I wonder? For the wall worshipper group, you instead get this familiar scene of them back from Attack on Titan Season 1. You also now get a full shot of baby Levi and his mother. I've seen a lot of you question who this lady was for my review. So yes, you got to see Levi even younger. The last shot of course was of Kenny. This definitely looks much better, now with the natted moving blood splatter. Slightly different blade handle as well. Next up, Historia becoming queen. First change here is the new design of Historia's crown. Beforehand, it was pretty standard, plain looking crown from Burger King. The anime crown now has some good sized red gems on it. Four of those spike things are also larger and connecting in the center now too. I thought they would go for three, you know, just keeping that triple digit as a wall reference. Down below, anime Historia's dress also got upgraded with his new added yellow design. Her dress used to be completely white, although it does go completely white a little bit later. Anime Historia herself is more dressed up now. She's got this circular hairstyle instead of simply keeping her hair down, like her manga counterpart. Anime Historia also has this new red king's cape, and she's lost that gold necklace that manga Historia was sporting. For the wide shot of Historia's crowning, well, that building structure in the back looks totally different. They also shifted three of the guys standing on the left over to the right side in the anime. Cause why not? Strangely, you got this new shot of Marlo and Hitch in the crowd. It's only weird since they cut out both of these from the Raw Church raid. They're going to be important in the next arc, so definitely don't forget about them. Next up, Historia's bigger moment. Right here you hear Mikasa and Eren discussing this, about how Mikasa gave her that idea to smack Levi. Then, Mikasa doubles down on it. Of course, Mikasa didn't originally have anything to do with it. Manga Eren instead was referring back to the Reese boss, since this whole punch Levi after becoming queen idea came from him. On the bright side, at least you got some non Eren lines out of Mikasa. I'll take anything. As for poor Levi here, not knowing the pain that was about to come, Manga Levi definitely didn't look as divine as they made him out to be for the anime. Very nice touch with that sunlight. By the way, the window right here, they totally changed that up. As for Levi's $1 million smile, one difference here is that you actually get the best of both worlds. For the anime, you actually get both the closed and open shot of it. After Levi smiled, somewhere in the distance, someone got cured of Titan AIDS. Next up, the Beast Titan and Warriors return. So sorry, Reiner, that was not a good look for you. The Season 3 anime gave you this new shot of the Armored Titan Smackdown on the ground from behind. Oh, that's embarrassing. Originally, you only saw the Armored Titan's destroyed face. Oh, Reiner, you thought you could take out the Beast Titan? You're so funny. Do notice a slight difference with anime Reiner's busted up Titan face. That is, that the eye that is still armored is closed instead of being left wide open. Finally, for the Beast Titan's user, anime Zeke has more abs going on. I'm guessing that may be to compensate, since Zeke has no pepperoni in the anime. Can't show that on TV. The biggest change, of course, is that Zeke no longer has that burn or wound on his arm. You could go ahead and wonder why. I'm sure that whatever Isayama was originally planning to do with that was dropped a while ago. So, hope you enjoyed this more detailed breakdown. Definitely like and subscribe if you want to see these weekly. Let's see how Erwin, Levi, and the rest of the Suri Corps deal with the Beast Titan and his own warrior squad. By the way, really quickly, I recently did a huge Patreon update. Please go ahead and check it out and become a supporter if you can. The lowest tier is only a dollar and that includes Discord access. Really trying hard to bring on my buddy John to help out with the channel, so please take a look. But anyway, let me hear from you now. What do you think about the changes done for Kenny's final moment? Or how about his story getting crowned? 
Were these scenes better in the anime or the manga? And how was that scene of the Beast Titan and Warriors returning? I'm definitely super hyped now. Anyway, definitely give a colossal thumbs up and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, I put out 5 plus anime videos here every week. If you haven't done so already, definitely check out the other 9 Attack on Titan changes videos. Also, my full in-depth video on Ron's Turkey Titan is out now. Check that out, hit bell notifications, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.